I am Reverend Father Matthias Tetejabati, the chaplain of St. Rosie Senior High School, Akwitia. About some 57 years ago, somewhere around 1965, a group of German sisters, Reverend sisters from the Dominican Order, came to Ghana. They first started St. Dominic Hospital, and as part of their vision of training Ghanaians who will be interested in healthcare of, I mean, the indigenous, they established St. Rosy Senior High School. And because of the hospital in mind, the school has become more of a science bias school. That will get more young ladies who will be interested in, in the health care of our people. So the Dominican sisters started the school some 57 years ago. The last of the founding sisters, Sister Sulamen, who just passed on last year, I guess may her soul rest in perfect peace. So that has been the history of the school. Currently, it is in the hands of the Catholic Diocese of Kufiridia and then assisted by the government to run it for the good of our country and especially the young ladies. I'm Maria Nancy Jackson, the headmistress of St. Rose's Senior High School. St. Rose's Senior High School is known for its academic excellence and discipline. St. Rose's for the past three years has been the, among the best, five best schools in Ghana, five top schools in Ghana. And when we come to the Eastern region, we are the Eastern Regional Champions when it comes to WASI. The school was awarded for academic excellence, for being first for three consecutive years. Recording best grades in the WASI or West African School Certificate Examination. Under normal circumstances, uh, we take a population less than 300, but with free education, the number has uh, shot up a little. Currently, we have about 520 of that of the second years, and uh, approximately 620, 30 of that of the first years. And so, in totality, we have 1,150. Uh, these students are inclusive as well. And when it comes to the teaching staff, we have 81 of uh, the teaching staff and that of the non-teaching, approximately 52. The various programs we offer here are general science, and I might say general science was the main reason this school was established by the Reverend Sisters by saying that they wanted the farmers' daughters to also become medical doctors. It's a general arts and home economics was added. So now we have three programs, general science, the school has its history and has made this mark of academic, high academic excellence and that of the moral values of the school. Uh, because it's a mission school and a Catholic school for that master, when we talk about discipline, it's of a very high level of value and level. And it has been maintained as such. You enter into the school when you realize that the environment is so quiet, discipline is at its peak. We don't allow our students to move out of the school for just mere reasons. They have boundaries where they cannot cross. Even before you enter the school, you realize a pipeline and that is a no-go area. They don't cross 
if they are not giving the permission. So achievements about the school is that the school is really noted for academic performance. And uh, students, when they write the WASI, more than 97% qualifies to the tertiary institution. Those who may not qualify or who may not be able to go, they have something to do with maybe the programs they haven't been given at the university levels or maybe financial situation. But we are proud to say that nothing less than 95% of our students that complete school always get to the tertiary institution. That is a very big mark for us. When it comes to the moral aspect, our students are really good because the training has been that firm. How to greet, how to say hello, how to pick or help the, the aged when they are moving. They are things we continuously instill in them. I'm Keizia Kwasina, a student of St. Joseph's Aquitia. I hold the position of Executive Without Portfolio in May. With our school's prefectorial board, we have the head girls, that's the school prefects, the compound overseers, sanitation prefects, male prefects, time managers, uh, the dining hall prefects, and other prefects who help in the leadership of the school. The benefits of student leadership in the dining halls and on the compound, we ensure that the place is neat every day. We have a policy, pick as you go policy, that is when you pick the litter around and put it in the dustbins when you see one. I think discipline is a hallmark of this institution. St. Joseph's is a Catholic mission school and the founding sisters build the school on discipline. The aim of the school is to train girls to be morally upright and disciplined, to be uh, future leaders who are responsible and many measures are put in place by the school to enforce discipline. The discipline in the school is not for only the students, it includes all the staff members. You must be able to discipline yourself and the students have come to realization that this is what we go by and the work for it. When school reopens, you must report on that day. If not, your parents must write to the school to explain and they have to bring it themselves. And I think it's helping us when they reopen and it is within the week, the following day, classes start. It is a must that every student must go to class and must take part in all activities in the school. When we talk about the ranking of the schools, for the past three years, WASI, we have taken the first position for the Eastern region. Three consecutive years, we have been first in the region. And nationally, we took the second came back third, took second. We are only waiting to take first at the national level. And so, and we are working seriously at that and praying that our students as we prepare them will add their quota and that of the parents also, so that the first position we will take. That is a hallmark for us. When it comes to infrastructure, we haven't received enough, but the school in our own small way, we keep what we have and we are managing it and praying and we are proud that though we so little, we make the good or the best out of it. So I'll say achievement, we are fulfilled and waiting for more. St. Rose's Senior High School as a body is quite known for its discipline. From our past students to our current students, the discipline is quite maintained. And that's one thing we are quite proud of. And also, we are known as one of the neatest schools, in fact girls, in all of the country. We are also known to be quite decent. You can tell from our uniforms, so even our haircuts. Also, our academic prowess is one to speak of. From our performance in the West African Students Certificate Examination, our participation in, in the NSMQ, in the WDS debate quizzes, we are quite one of the best. <laughs>
Concerning extracurricular activities of the school, we have many. There are quite a lot of clubs in the school. Let's begin with Writers and Debater Society, who teach the students of the school how to develop on their writing capacity, stories, poems, and then the Debater Society, who teach you how to bring on a strong argument. And clubs like Lend the Hand, Child's Right, and even the school help with help teach students that it's always okay once in a while to donate to the less privileged. Societies in the school like Ghana United Nations Students Association, GUNSA, helps teach students about human rights activities and international diplomacy. Clubs and societies like AFS, American Field Service, help the students bring out their talents and also takes them on exchange programs outside the country to learn more about other cultures, as they say, connecting lives, sharing cultures. The editorial board, who produces the yearly magazine of the school for every batch that comes in groups. And then the entertainment committee, responsible for every Saturday's entertainment. And then we also have the Catholic, the Catholic and Anglican Students Union. They make sure that every religious activity in the school happens, it goes well, and is well organized. The children have routine masses almost every day. On Wednesdays, the school come together as a body to have a school mass. On Sundays, too, we come together. There are school rules and regulations that governs the students. And we have guidance and counseling units that also advises the children, guides them as to what to do and what not to do. All these things help shape the girls in the school. We are proud of the discipline of our girls. As a Catholic mission school, we begin and end everything with God. Throughout the week, we have encounter with God through our celebration of Holy Mass. So we begin the day at 5.30 with louds or morning prayers for the whole school. After which the girls some break into various class level for morning prep while the rest remain for Mass. So depending on the class a student belongs to, on Tuesdays we have Masses for first years at 5.40, right after the morning prayers. Then on Wednesdays, we have general community mass, the whole school, I and mean the students and staff. On Thursdays, we have mass for second year students. And then on Friday, mass for third year students. Saturday, Sunday, we have general mass or community mass. And then as part of the spiritual activities, at 12 o'clock each day, we pray the Angelus. Six in the morning, we pray the Angelus. Six in the evening, we pray the Angelus. Then at 6 p.m., right after the Angelus, there are various classes that meet for the prayer of the rosary throughout the period of their stay in school. So for us, outside the rosary month, we still pray the rosary throughout the year. And then every first and third Sunday of the month, we have Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, which is for the whole school community. And every last Saturday of the month, we have Grotto Mass, which we dedicate ourselves and the school community to the most sacred heart of Jesus at the Sacred Heart Grotto. And then every semester, we have retreat for the students as part of their spiritual formation. So the major spiritual activities and religious activities and in May, in, in March this year, as part of the Lenten retreat, we had a very powerful Lenten re retreat directed by Reverend Father Raphael Japon Frimpong from Pope John. It was a four-day program during which we had 
chance to have the sacrament of penance and reconciliation on a large scale for, for a number of students. And then in May, we had another retreat, which we call the Latter Race Retreat. And we we're privileged to also host Diana Hamilton, the gospel musician, to, I mean, who graced the occasion of the Latter Day Retreat. Aside that, we had our Thanksgiving, annual Rosa Thanksgiving, the school, which the bishop himself was the main celebrant. Then we had the Thanksgiving for those who completed this year. And then we are having this climax of the Rosary Mass. St. Rose's Senior High School, Aquitia, and also the Castle President. Castle stands for Catholic Anglican Students Union. It is a society in school which ensures that students always attend to all religious gatherings in the school, which is either held at the assembly hall or at the go to. Masses are usually held from Tuesdays to Sundays. The Legion of Mary is one of the many societies in this school. Now what sets us apart is that we are a Catholic religious society which can be found in many Catholic churches around the world. Here in St. Joseph's, Legion of Mary has usually have our meetings on Sundays from 10.45 to 12 p.m. During our meetings, we say some basic prayers such as the Legion and the Katina. After which we have our allocation, which is what we call our minutes. After that, we have an activity which is a, just a way of relieving stress. Then we see a closing prayer in the meeting in. So I see Rose's Castle in the next five to ten years, shaping people's spiritual lives, making them positive changes in people in their society. People who um, change lives, not only to their benefit, but to the benefit of others. Every year, the bishop has made it a point to visit the school, especially the climax of the Rosary Mass. And each year comes with its own new dimensions and vibes for the students. And so the bishop has been, you know, of great support to the school. Currently, he has given permission for the construction of a church building. We have already cleared the land and we are looking forward to constructing about three to 5,000 capacity church building and the bishop is fully interested in this so that we no longer use the assembly hall but we use the church building to get that spiritual i mean impact and sacredness of the liturgy in the church Especially my teachers, they are doing very well. With a little supervision and monitoring, everything is on course. Our students are also doing well. Their parents help by providing all the necessary logistics that will help them to learn. For example, every student must have their own calculator. You are not supposed to bring anyone's calculator. And with this, it's a very good mark for us, as the student will not be interrupting anyone when it comes to learning. Also, our labs. We have science lab, home economics lab, and they do a lot of practicals. We also have a library. That is where the students normally go for their research when they want more information to add to what the teachers have given them. 
about the parents, pity. They have also been very, very helpful to the school. The parents have provided ball homes for the school. Now this area, we have problem with water situation. But with the help of the parents, now we have ball homes. Some parents voted to put up a drill ball holes for us. They've also provided science laboratory equipment for the school. Some have also given us the PTA self has provided chairs for the assembly hall. They have provided a generator, cold room to store for storage of food. When we do our bulk purchases, that is where we keep our food. But these and many more are some of the things the parents have done for the school. We cannot but thank the old students for the support we have been given the school. But for all students, I don't know what the school will do. The successes we have talked can be attributed to them. They have provided us with um, laptops for the ICT labs. Assembly hall we see out there. They renovated everything. They have renovated the kitchen, sick bay, also provided ball holes, polytanks, classrooms, some of them have been renovated. They have also given us chairs for the assembly hall. These are many things I hope they have done for the school. That house has also been renovated. And many others for the school. They have been helping the school very, very much. Without them, I don't think the school will start. We are qualified to call the school an uh, old student school. The moment we call on them, they are there to help. So we are so grateful to the old students.
want to acknowledge, of course, the diocese as the owner of the school. The diocese from I mean, successive bishop, Archbishop Bakel, to a current bishop who has played, I mean, who has been of great support, most Reverend Joseph Fifa Jekum, the entire diocese. And then the school in recent times, you know, has benefited greatly from the ROSA, that is St. Rose's Old Students Association, from ROSA North America, who the group which renovated the Archbishop Ando Block, then the ROSA National or Global, recently they renovated the Assembly Hall over 300,000 project, which was dedicated just last year. And they are undertaking a number of projects to ensure that the girls have a good place to stay. So ROSA has been of great support. We also want to acknowledge the support of the PTA. It's not been easy in recent times, you know, but the PTA has stepped in on a number of occasions, drilling of boreholes, providing food and all that for the school. So we are grateful to them. And these and other well wishes uh, we, we may not be able to mention here. We want to say thank you and God's blessings upon them. The school has an uh, ongoing dormitory block, three-story dormitory block from the gate front. It's ongoing, it has stored for some time. And there is an ongoing classroom, 12 unit classroom block two. That one has also stored. So these are the two major projects that are ongoing. You now we are in technological age and uh, we are looking up to join the, the era by turning our library to e-library uh, so that when the students go home, they, they can have continuous learning. We are so, so grateful. St. Rose's is very grateful to all our stakeholders, especially the church. The church from time to time gave us pieces of advice uh, to keep us going and they also pray for us for very good. We also thank the Board of Governors who keep us on our toes. They set strict targets for us to meet when it comes to uh, examination of the students. The targets are set and we, they expect us to always meet the targets. We are so grateful to them for keeping us on our toes. The old students, I cannot but thank them because most of the projects in this school were done by these old students, my old students. I'm very grateful to Rosa. Parents cannot be left out. They have been so supportive to the cause of the school. We are grateful to all, all the stakeholders and the, and the teachers, the staff members, my hardworking staff members. They are always regular, punctual, and are dutiful. And they are helping the school. They are the cause why the school has attained the successes it has taught. And we are so grateful to them. Thank <laughs> you. 